Hey everyone, this video is about Vesper theory, which tells us the shape or the geometry that molecules will make. So the goal of this video is to be able to use this Vesper theory to f figure out or predict what geometry or shape um, covalent compounds will make. Vesper is an acronym. It stands for valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion. So valence shell electron pair repulsion is what Vesper theory is. And the what it's essentially saying is we know valence shell is the outermost um, ring or um, energy level. And then we have these electrons there. And so what they're saying here is that those outermost valence electrons actually repel each other in um, molecular compounds. So the, the main idea of how all of these shapes and geometries form is that electrons want to stay as far away from each other as possible, so they're going to make a shape that'll, that gives the electrons the most possible room. Why do we use Vesper theory? Well, we're using it to predict the geometry or the shape of a molecule. And again, it's all about this idea that electron pairs repel each other, so they want to give themselves as much room as humanly possible. So there's lots of different shapes that these molecules can make. So I actually come up with a cheat code to help me figure out what it might be. Um, so first I'm gonna draw my Lewis structure. And when I draw the structure, I'm gonna write the code based off the drawing. So my code, A represents the central atom. Any X in my code will represent the atoms that are directly bonded to the central atom. And an E in my code will represent any lone pairs of electrons that are drawn on the central atom. And really we're focusing about that central atom, not lone pairs on, on the outer atoms, just the central atom. So here's an example. Um, let's say that I have a Lewis structure. Again, there's no element A or X, but it's just kind of the idea. So say like we have a Lewis structure that looks like this guy. We have A, the central atom, and it has three atoms bonded directly to it with those covalent bonds sharing electrons. So AX3 is my code. Notice in the picture there are no lone pairs on that A, um, so there are no E's in my code. Well, AX3 stands for the geometry trigonal planar. So what that means is if I have a central atom and three bonded atoms to it, no lone pairs, it will make this shape every time, and it has a bond angle of 120 degrees. Why? That's the maximum distance that these bonded atoms can be so that they each have as much room as possible. So let's write the cheat code. Here's my example. I have NH3. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each of the hydrogens have um, one each. So we have eight total electrons to work with in our bank. I put nitrogen in the middle. Anytime you see a single, he's probably my central. So I'll put those hydrogens kind of around. We always do a single bond. So now that gives us two, four, six. So we've used up six, so I only have two electrons remaining. Make your outside guys happy first. So all the hydrogens are satisfied. They only want two electrons, and that's satisfied by the single bond. So any leftovers, then we put on the central atom on the nitrogen. So in writing the cheat code, I have a central atom, A, and there's just one of him, one nitrogen. There are three atoms directly bonded to that central atom, and we put X's for those, so X3 and there is one lone pair on the central atom. So the cheat code is AX3E. So that's how you use the Lewis structure to write the cheat code. Now I'll show you how to go from the cheat code to the actual name of the geometry. All right, on the second page of your note packet, I know this looks a little intimidating, so I'm gonna try to help you figure out where we're writing. Okay, right now we're gonna do this kind of highlighted region in the notes, and then we'll worry about the bottom half next. So that highlighted row, all of those are called base shapes. So that means that the Lewis structures do not have any lone pairs on the central atom. That's what makes it a base shape. So first, I want you to fill in on your chart in your notes the linear column. The cheat code for a linear structure, so this is the name of geometry linear, is AX2. And here's kind of an example. We have a central atom with two bonded atoms. That's linear. So you can draw that sketch. So a linear base shape, again, here's kind of like a molecule version. It's going to have a bond angle of 180 degrees because this guy and this guy want to be as far away from each other as possible.
The next base shape is trigonal planar, AX3, which we already saw. So you have a central atom with three atoms bonded to it. Trigonal planar is going to look like just flat like a triangle. That's how the name comes from, right? If I connect, oops, excuse me. If I connect these guys, it's a triangle and it's, it's flat. It's not um, a pyramid or anything like that. We'll get to those in a little bit. So that's where the planar comes from. Next, we have tetrahedral. It has the cheat code AX4. So if you draw your Lewis structure and there's one central atom and four bonded atoms, it is called tetrahedral. So tetrahedral is now getting us kind of into the 3D. Um, so picture this guy coming out towards you, this guy kind of going back into the board. Um, and what happens is we actually are able to get a bond angle of 109.5 degrees, which is nice because if I did something that was... 2D and flat, this bond angle would only be, sorry, maybe I'll do it like math class, 90 degrees, right? So by going into the 3D and having this guy come out towards us, this guy go back into the board, the atoms are actually um, at a bigger angle, so they're farther away from each other, which is what they want. It's called tetrahedral. Next, we have trigonal bipyramid, so AX5, so central atom with five bonded atoms. Here's kind of the molecule drawing. It gets the name trigonal bipyramid because if you look, these guys around the waist, I call it, make a triangle. And we can then go up and make a pyramid. There's one trigonal pyramid. And we can also make a pyramid going down. It's like two pyramids stacked on top of each other, trying to show it there. Okay, so the name trigonal by pyramid, right? We're making two pyramids by is a prefix meaning two. And last, we have octahedral, AX6. So octahedral is AX6, one central atom, six bonded atoms. Um, if if I ran the world, I know I always say I want to rename a bunch of things, but I would actually call this one square by pyramid. Because, oops, excuse me. If you look, this guy makes a square, planar square, and then we can go up to a pyramid, right? There's one square pyramid, and then down here would be that second square pyramid. So if I ran the world, I would call this square by pyramid, just like trigonal by pyramid, but it's actually called octahedral. The reason we get that name is if you put like faces and made this more like a dice, there would be eight sides to the dice, and octahedron, that's where the name comes from. So we've only looked at the base shape so far. Um, now we're going to get into when the central atom has a lone pair. And you guys know about lone pairs from drawing Lewis structures. But just to remind you, a lone pair is a, a pair of electrons that are not shared with another atom. So they're not in a chemical bond. They just belong to the atom that they're drawn on. Some important things. Lone pairs take up more space than bonded atoms, which causes a, a change, a slight change in the geometry. So if you replace one of the bonded atoms with a lone pair, the shape is going to change because the lone pair takes up more room than the bonded atom. So back to your notes. Um, we should have already filled out this trigonal planar, right? You should have a sketch and the cheat code. But now we're going to kind of look at a variation of trigonal planar called bent. So now you're going to be filling out this box right here. So here, again, we already did the trigonal planar. You should be good. We're going to look at bent. So if I take one of these bonded atoms and replace it with a lone pair, now my code is AX2E, right? We went from AX3 to AX2E. So this E represents a lone pair. Well, we know that the lone pair takes up more room. So instead of it being called trigonal planar, we call it bent. So when we describe the shape, we only describe the bonded atoms and the central atoms. We ignore the lone pairs, even though we know they're taking up more room. I'll show you a kind of a, a drawing of this or a model of this in class. Um, but it gets the name bent because it looks like linear, but it's just bent. Moving on to variations of tetrahedral. So again, you've already filled this guy out, and we're going to look at two different variations. So the first variation, if we take our AX4 and we replace one of the bonded atoms with a lone pair, um, it's called trigonal pyramid, AX3E. So we're going to have a lone pair on that central atom and we're going to make a triangle pyramid shape with the X's and up to the A. 
if I replace a second, now we're in what's called bent. So now we've seen bent twice. So if you're ever unsure what to pick, bent's a good guess because um, the name pops up twice. So the cheat code is AX2E2, two bonded atoms, two lone pairs. Um, water is actually a bent molecule. It has a Lewis structure with two bonded atoms and then two lone pairs. So here are some examples and kind of 3D. Again, when you look, when you describe the shape, we ignore these yellow lone pairs when we describe the shape. So here's our tetrahedral trigonal pyramid. You see, makes the triangle, goes up to the pink bent. It looks, if you just look from here to here, it looks like it was linear, but someone bent it over their knee. And here's some examples of each in terms of Lewis structures. All right, almost done. So now we're in the trigonal bipyramid. So again, we've already filled this out. We're gonna look at variations of trigonal bipyramid. If I take my AX5 and I replace it with one lone pair, I get AX4E, okay? Now we have a choice. If you look, my lone pair can either go up or down, or it could go on one of these guys. Um, it does matter where we put the lone pair because the lone pair is gonna go where it has the maximum amount of room. And the reality is these guys, these top guys are at a 90 degree angle. These guys, because they make a triangle, are at 120 degrees. So if I'm a lone pair and I want as much room as possible, I'm gonna to choose to go where I have 120 degrees. So if you notice, the lone pair, get a different color, went, I call it on the belly, on the round side, right, where this triangle is being made, that's where the lone pair is going to go. The name of this structure is called seesaw, and I'll show you guys in class where this name comes from, but essentially, if you tip this guy on his side, and then we get our lone pair. So I just tipped this guy this way. Can you picture a small child sitting right here and a small child sitting right here and them seesawing up and down? There's the legs of the seesaw, here's the seat. That's where the name comes from. They say it looks like a seesaw. All right, now if I replace two, I'm gonna still replace from this belly. Um, so there, we tipped it on the side so you could see the shape better. So I tipped this guy, here's my two lone pairs. This guy is called T-shaped. So AX3E2 is T-shaped and you can see where the name comes from. Ignore those lone pairs, there's the letter T. And then the last variation is AX2E3. This is linear. So I've now replaced all three of these guys with lone pairs. And so if you see where the shape is, A to X to X, or X to A to X, I mean, it's a linear shape. So now we've seen linear twice as well. Two shapes have the name linear. Here are some examples for you. Again, we're replacing these guys with lone pairs. Um, when you tip it on its side, here's the seesaw. There's your cute little kid. Seesaw and up and down, T-shaped, there's your T, and then linear, there's your linear shape. All right, last column is the octahedral. Um, so we have already have filled oops, this guy out. We're going to do two variations for octahedral. If I replace one of the bonded atoms with a lone pair, we get square pyramid. So for octahedral, because everything is 90 degrees, we're actually replacing the tops and the bottoms. So in this case, my lone pair is down here. There's my square up to the pyramid. Square pyramid is AX5E. And lastly, AX4E2, so now I'm replacing the top and the bottom, is called square planar because it's a flat square shape. So planar meaning flat two-dimensional. Here they are one more time. So you octahedral, then you get your square pyramid, there's your lone pair, and then your two lone pairs for square planar. So say like I give you a chemical and I want you to tell me what the geometry or the Vesper geometry is. Your first step, draw the Lewis structure. So you follow what we've been doing in class, you draw the Lewis structure. Then you will write your cheat code by counting up the bonded atoms and the lone pairs on the central atom. So you'll get a cheat code and that will then help you get the geometry of the molecule. We will be putting the cheat codes with the names on the back of our periodic table to help us. So for example, on the back of your periodic table, you can have something like this, AX2E2 equals bent. 
And that way, once you have the Lewis structure and you have the cheat code, you can get the name. Um, we'll also have some shapes hanging from the ceiling in the class, so that helps too if you can actually describe what the shape is. Nine times out of ten, you can figure out what the name is. Okay, so I know that was a lot really fast. We will practice this a lot and I will show you and we'll build these shapes in class, but I wanted to just give you the bulk of the information in a video. That way we can practice, we can look at the shapes, we can touch them, we can build them, um, and I promise you will have tons of practice so this feels easy um, during the unit.